Oh, you're so adorable. Thank you. Yay. I like the red. I thought it was crit, baby. First of all, do not say anything like that online. Well, you. You, we are not finishing that conversation. Babe, you said we it was We have crit. love for you everybody. You have all the items that we you wear. We have love for everybody. I'm from okay. Detroit, guys. Do they not have Crips and I'm Bloods? I'm from Detroit, guys. Do they have Crips and Bloods in Detroit? No, Let me know. the whole city is. Uh, it's Crip? The whole city are independent contractors. I got everything <laughs> on the line. I wish you could wish me luck. Wish you could wish me luck. Y'all watching BMF? That's a show that takes place in Detroit. What up, you guys? It's episode 80 of the Marriage the Go least Round. You could do is wish me luck the least right. you could do is. I, I realized that as I said it, I was right. like, oh, it's at least. I hate when you do that on camera. Not you, but like both of us. When you know the words and then you mess them up and it's live. It's yeah. too late. You can't edit it. But anyway, too at least you can wish me luck. All right, you too guys. Late. It's fake. Too hard to tell a snake when you can live it. <laughs> Maybe we should have left it where we, where we had it. We could have. We could have stopped right there. We could have stopped. just went on with the podcast. We should go on with it. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Like I was saying, it is episode number 8080 of the Marriage Go Round podcast with your real life married couple hosts, CSS Real Life Married Couple hosts, Tangerine and CT. I'm we so need to get excited. some friends that are in the 80s. I got a couple friends in their 60s. Ooh. And fifties. I need some friends in their eighties. Do you want them to be married 80s. so they can be a good example for us? Why are you going to make about relationships? I just want to know people that are older. Relationship podcast, and I was saying we were on episode eighty. I thought that you were going to say something that had to do with podcasts. We related marriage. Can't get that car. Can't get that argument counter started. We are in a relationship because we are related now because we in a relationship. Well, everyone who relates to one another is in a relationship technically. I like that. It's true. I'm in a relationship with y'all. Yes. Please come help me with some of these responsibilities I have, guys. It's a lot. And I go He's raw, guys, so get ready. <laughs> get ready for this relationship. Oh, my goodness. Let me just take a moment yeah. to center myself before you tell everybody our business. Yeah. That we've never tried it with the kind of listen. You know what's wild? When what? people, when you see couples that are like, like when we watch Love is Blind, they're like, yeah. You know, and they're like, so you guys use the comments are like, yeah. And it's like, as a married couple, that's really weird. Because they don't know each other. It's love is blind. They, they've known each other for six weeks. That lust ain't blind. Oh, that lust is not blind. Lust ain't blind. You trying to think of a new TV show? I don't think you could do nothing with it. I mean, lust ain't blind. the way Peacock is showing all the sex and nudity, you could sell them something. Let me tell you something. Peacock. Did you, did you guys watch Couples to Thruples Oof. on Peacock? You should. Because they show nudity. They they got couples that are getting threesomes. It's a lot. They have the camera on while they're in the bed at yeah. night. Anyways, can we start the show? I thought we already started. Well, we didn't go through the protocol. Man, No, it's not time for that. You know it's not time for that. First, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you. I'd like to shout out the people who left comments before we got here when they saw this link go up. First up was Jordan Taylor. He says... Can't wait for another wonderful marriage go round. Always good that this show is telling everyone deserves love and happiness for themselves and those they treasure mostly in this world we've been we've been given. Love and happiness. Thank you so much, Jordan Taylor. Oh. You are such a sweetheart, and you, you always leave something so positive. Latasha Luxury says MGR with our favorite emojis. The blue heart is for him. The tangerine heart is for me. The, <laughs> the crown is for him. And the tangerine emoji is for me. Kenny King says, we ready. Mm -hmm. so, Kenny is so do you realize this is what you don't like in your other podcast you'd be complaining about? I'm assisting you. Are you? Mm -hmm. If I did I did I need your assistance? You don't need it? I'll hang back. <laughs> <laughs> I hang back about you. About you needed. I mean, if somebody was doing this to you on your every word on your other podcast, you would cuss about and you would fire them from the podcast. Let's try it. Let's try what? You assist me. Babe, you would hate it. Let's okay, see. we'll do it. We'll do it later. Let okay. me just get through this. We ready, Kenny King says. Hashtag team tangerine, hashtag team ring. And then she says in another comment, Team CT all day. I heard y'all last week. To which I replied, nah, Kenny King, you stay loyal to Team Ring the way Cobra Tay stays loyal to only Team CT. And she laughed. So we'll keep it at that. Well, I'm early. Eddie Mac says, woohoo, Bears go around 80, Autumn Reed says. Andrea Lilly says, hey, hey, Andrea Lilly. Andrea Lilly. Isaac Woodrow says, looking forward to another fun show. So let's go, all oh, capital shit. letters. Andrea Lilly throwing up both of our emojis. Eric Legette is in this building. My favorite couple, Biggie Whitaker says, 
I mean, he could be IVL. What's that stand for? Just because it's saying. He could be IVL? Instead of um, Crips and Bloods, it's IVL. Oh, my God. I don't, hey, listen. I don't know. Listen, we're he's, not having any he's more from Detroit, I think, conversations about. I'm just trying to figure out what it was an older comment. So I was Seven sure. Mile as a whole mile is a gang. Brightmore is a gang. Um, then you've got West Coast, East Coast beef. And then you have uh, Evergreen. Evergreen like a drink out there? Myers. You got a lot of different people. <laughs> Everfresh is what you're thinking. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. Everfresh is a juice that we uh, have that's fix popular me. in fix Detroit. Me. Fix me. Uh, it's regional. It's probably regional. A lot of people have it down in Atlanta. Because, you know, stuff that's in Detroit also goes to Atlanta and sometimes the Carolinas. Just because says y'all came in hot. Argument counter one. We didn't Daddy. argue. We didn't argue. Bandersnatch says close call. See? Because, oh, I think he was trying to say Bambi. He was asking Bambi. Oh. Okay. He didn't put the N in there. What is going on with this? Okay. Shoulders. What's up, Andre Lily? Sounds great, CT. Love you I'm both. Gonna, I'm going to say day. thank you and just assume and hope that that's for me because no one want to hear that. Okay, show them I, I thought it was because I was showing my show. Oh, that could be cool too. You know but what it is? But you're getting a compliment, what? We watch a lot of big back TV. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I just always think of women about to get it. Latasha says, loving that sweater on you, CT. That thank you. for you. This one is uh, the first time I wore it. I didn't really like how it looked on me. Now it seems like it's better. It looks great. Insane Thanks. Vice Lord is what IBL stands for. Oh, Vice Lords for sure. I thought that was Chicago. I seen that on the Good Times reruns. Yeah, those are in uh, Chicago for sure. But you don't know what part of uh, town just guys grew up in. I think he's East Side. If he grew up on the East Side, this, that's that's a whole different state. <laughs> Speaking of couples of throuples on Peacock, Banner Snatch says Peacock says, "quote We got cock in the name." That's what I was thinking because they go there. Oh yeah, we go sorry. there. They go. All right, let's uh, just let you know what kind of show this is. We'll catch you up. Well, I'm sorry, we'll do the theme song after we let you know what kind of show this is. Then we'll catch you up on our week and then we'll get into relationship topics. And this is one of those shows where you can get on camera with us and talk to us about your relationship. I already see somebody in the green room. I'm excited to get an update from. But first, <clears throat> let me let you know, this is the Marriage Go Around podcast. We talk about relationships. It's on a Wednesday because the word wed is in Wednesday. Also, Wednesday is hump day. And you know, I'll be humping on my husband. Hey, we got married on a Wednesday. I was born on a Wednesday. So we're here on a Wednesday. And- I was born on a Tuesday. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. It's so funny when you tell me that. And I, I love Tuesdays because, you know, Tangentastic Tuesdays. Um, I guess it's time for the theme song. You ready? Yep. <clears throat> we scratch our throat at the same time. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, and do. I don't trust the smile. I don't trust the smile. What's about to happen? You look way too innocent. We're singing nothing so. The way you said I'll hang back is... <laughs> I'll hang back. I'll hang back. All right, here we go. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, and do. Five, six, seven, eight. Marriage door. Marriage door. Santa Rita's three teams. Marriage door. Because it's married things and things are rough. Married things and things are rough. The Real Relationship Podcast. Blaka, blaka, blaka. You actually did it. Yep. It was perfect. Oh. The energy wasn't at a thousand, but mm -hmm. it was you did everything perfectly. You, you know what energy wasn't proper? Because I didn't trust you. <laughs> you didn't trust I me. didn't trust you. You were looking at me the whole time. I, I was, was like, what does she think I'm gonna do? <laughs> yeah. Uh Joyride, West Side, but I have family everywhere. That's Joy Road. Was, Joy Road, thank you. Why won't it let me touch that comment? My iPad. I just cleaned it too. CT been warming up his vocals already. He had definitely has. Oh, they don't want me to touch anything. I guess if I touch the one underneath, oh, if I touch the one under it, the one on top goes up. Dre Lily. What's up, Zachary? Zachary Schkep. Y'all look so happy. It's adorable. Thank you, just because we're good actors. I'm just kidding. I, I actually am falling more and more in love with him each day, which is, which is a great thing. I've heard it's possible. I feel it happening. I'm very happy with that. Mm. That's very kind of you to say. You, you, you're in love with me, babe? Yeah. Nobody believes you. I don't know what to do for you today. <laughs> You don't think I'm gonna sing the theme song? I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing love to you every day. You go, mm. uh, cause that's that's something to say. That's kind. That is kind. Like sometimes receiving a compliment like that is like, wow, that's something. <sighs> I fall more and more in love with the person each day. Yeah. Uh, I guess my version of that is, I feel the need to take care of you more and more every day. So it's like, uh. Okay, I have to make sure this is taken care of 
for her. And You're talking us. about how you provide for me financially? Well, sometimes, Sandrine, no. But what I'm saying is sometimes in relationships, depending on the role that you guys have chosen, love becomes that role. Like, for example, an hour ago, Tangerine cooked me breakfast, yo. I was like, oh, thank you. Felt so much love in that plate. And um, it's like, that's you showing me an action word that you love me instead of just saying it. And for me... Because your love language is acts of service. Because somebody else <laughs> would need me to cook for them to show that I love them. Well, I could just say it to them. If you, theirs was words, of words, but yours is acts. Right, but you've definitely shown it in a million other ways, but for that something that is a direct solution to a problem of mine <laughs> is another love language. People solving problems. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Lexi Lex says, CT did look suspicious. LOL. The theme song was still fire. Appreciate that, Lexi. Jordan, Lex. Jordan Taylor says, you're uh, one of the best actors I've ever seen, you guys, um, which I don't think he'd get the joke of me calling it an actor. Isa says, CT, it seems like you're having more fun with it every time y'all do that theme song. Yay! All right, so what have you been up to since last week? Uh, yesterday, I did a guest appearance on the Adam Carolla podcast. Oh, that's huge! Yeah, that's, that's huge. already uh, it's definitely doing well on YouTube, and Yay. I guess where his other podcast goes. Um, I was so honored to do it because I've been watching Adam Carolla since The Man Show mm. when I was a kid. Mm. And uh, to sit and talk with him was cool. And then I got a text earlier from one of the producers of the show who actually got me on, Homegirl Crystal. She's very, very funny. And she's fine. Uh, Middle Eastern from Detroit. Oh, I don't know if she's Caribbean or Middle Eastern. No. Okay. But yeah. Uh, so she hit me earlier today. And she was like, hey, Adam wants you to be a regular on the show. So we will we want to see you once every three months. I was like, wow, I'll be honored. How many do they shoot per? I don't know. Once but... every three months and make you a regular? Hey. You about to shoot 10 episodes in the same day? I doubt it. I think it's just like uh, the way they shoot is interesting. But at the same time, you know me. I'm Mr. I don't like oversaturating myself. So that's perfect. Well, first, congratulations. Thanks. That's huge. Nice. Being a regular on a major podcast um, is really going to get your name out there to a different, whole different type of fan base. The whites. I and didn't want to call them the whites, but yes, it will yeah. be the whites. So As what my boy takes, Alan, hey, Alan Havey will say, uh, more marquee. However, uh, interestingly, the comments on the YouTube video, there are two videos that I'm in, apparently. There's one podcast, and I guess they reposted the same one. On the one with my name on it, 100% positive comments and love. And then the next one, because uh, I think they're going into their other guest, mm -hmm. and it's like maybe a bit of me or whatever. Oh, okay. Only two things mentioned me. And one of them, uh, dude said, Clayton Thomas, uninteresting, untalented, unfunny. And I, I wanted to comment, man, thanks for spelling my name correctly. But I was like, you nah. You, you should have. But this is the thing that happens with us, especially as content creators, but with everybody on social media. Because our brains are set up to keep us safe, that's it, the brain's only goal, we focus on the negative because we find ourselves needing to protect ourselves. So he got all positive comments on that one video. They were amazing. Didn't quote one of those. He quoted the negative one on the other video when that video wasn't even about him. So let's focus on the fact that one, you did the podcast, which is huge. Two, you were so good at it that they were inviting you back to be a regular. And three, you got a bunch of positive comments from people in the clip that was uh, more focused on you. Yeah, and I want to say, it's not that I remember negative comments. It's just that one was so standoutable because it was three uns, and it's kind of hard to forget three of the same kind of cadence. Tell me one of the positive comments. Oh, one of the positive comments mm -hmm. was like, oh, man, I love that story about him fighting growing up, and I fought when I was growing up, and this was great to hear. Another one said... Yeah, this is actually great to hear. I've never heard of Clay Thomas before, but now I'm a fan. Great. Love that. You thought you was going to get me. No, I didn't. I just wanted to end on a positive note. You know me, optimism. Mm. All right, let's talk about relationships. I have a couple of things what that were posted in the Discord and some stuff. Okay, so what this show is, is relationships, but we also talk about funny relationship memes, and then we bring on guests to talk about relationships. You know, today is Love is Blind Reunion, and uh, you're not going to be here for it. So I'm going to have to let you know what happened. If you think that you, because your love language is me cooking for you, which ain't in the book, 
My love language is our quality time that we spend. <laughs> That's a lie. Really? So if you think you can watch a show that we watch together without me, you got me effed up. But I thought you said you had a list of things uh, that are on your schedule and that are time consuming and watching things is one of them. They are. Oh, okay. But I still choose to do that because it's for quality time. Okay. So you like quality time and touch. That's your thing. You know this about me already. You like Have you just met me? Got you. Quality time and touch. That's your thing. <sighs> All right. This meme is from- Did you feel from... my arm around you last night when we went to sleep? I did, baby. And I, I actually moved your arm on top of my arm. Now I moved your arm. Yeah. So I was under and bam, so you, you didn't feel restrained. You felt that? Um, I didn't feel straight, restrained, so cool, thank cool, you. Cool, 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 cool. Just Cuz says, y'all see how a good woman help you focus on the good? Exactly, Just Cuz. You deserve it, CT. Congratulations, Jordan Thanks, Taylor says. JT. Congratulations from Taisha. Congratulations from Just Cuz. Thank you guys so much. The, I'm not sure what that emoji is, but I put it on the screen already. I um, I honestly, I thought she was going to get you, honestly, Andrea says. See, Andrea knew. Uh, Miss Mia says, yeah, I'm waiting on that reunion. Yeah, Popcorn Tamir. emoji. I'm ready. And argument counter, dot, dot, dot. Thank you, Bandit Has it ever. Hilarious. All right, let's get into a couple of these memes, and then we'll get into some more things. What this you got for one us, says, let's see. I don't know which one this one is. What's that say? Okay, this is from Six Brown Chicks on Instagram. I love when you give me the sound effects as I read. Okay. This is anonymous. It goes to their page and they post it and we laugh about it. It says, my boyfriend's baby mama called my child a moon-faced menace. <laughs> <laughs> and I promised I would jump her ass on sight. I caught her dropping off their baby and I jumped out the car to fight her. Mm. But my four-year-old accidentally put the car in drive <gasps> and I was pinned between my car and her parked car. Oh. My hip was crushed. Oh. I had a hip replacement and I wear a lower body brace. Ooh. I can't have sex and I have a severe limp. Mm. That's crazy. My boyfriend says my hip and body brace disturb him. So he says he'll sleep with his baby's mama. <laughs> but it's just sex between them. Also, he says he cares about me and he'll be there when my leg and hip get stronger. Ooh. I don't understand what our rule of engagement is. Is he saying he's going to love me from a distance while he sleeps with her? Uh, is she just a, a smash substitute for me? Or is she someone I should worry about? I won't stand for another man to play in my face. Advice? Whew. Well, first of all, <laughs> you're not going to stand for nothing. <laughs> ah! for quite some time. <laughs> ah! That's number one. Oh, you wrong. Number two. Oh, you wrong. Soon as this story went around when she got pinned between that car. You know the first thought I had? What? God don't like ugly. God don't like ugly. She was planning to hurt this woman in front of her child. Wow. And God said, nah, nah. The, your own four-year-old was was the hero. She stopped the fight. <laughs> Slick to far, he said. <laughs> it's a cold game, my head. She Wait a minute, though. She was defending her four-year-old. Her four-year-old was called a moon-faced menace. Which, let's also discuss. Which is hilarious. I've never heard that insult before. And, and you're that's talking, why, and it's so good. That's what pissed her off. You're talking to somebody that has heard almost <laughs> every insult her, said to somebody. I <laughs> thought I'd heard it all. Moon face? And that bit lets you know that her child probably got a big wide face. Oh, that's a big wide face. It's probably a little fat baby. Or that baby's face so narrow. <laughs> that looks like a quarter moon? Like, ah! a, like a crescent moon. <laughs> And that's, you know. Oh, that's worse. That's something to A child with a skinny face, I don't even want to see it. I'm going to go with the fat face, baby. Moon but whatever face it was, baby. that moon face menace moon insult face menace. pissed her off to the point where she said, I'm going to beat you up on sight. She hops out the car, leaves her child in there, goes to do a molly wop and gets crushed. And now she can't smash. I got another question. Yes. Why... Did she go in front of her car to her parked car? It seems like you would go driver's side to driver's side. I don't know. Maybe like that she, accident maybe, shouldn't have happened. Maybe she was talking mess through the windshield first. Mm. Get out of the car and I'm going to do this and do that. You mm. called my baby. Let's also discuss the fact that uh, her child's father said, you know what? It's cool. I'm going to go ahead and smash baby's mom. <laughs> like, like that was, like was going to be acceptable. <laughs> she really uh, it's just going to be smashing, though. That's all it is. Don't worry. And when you heal, I'll be back because I love you. I'll be back. Let me see. She never breaks her promise, Jordan Taylor says. Sticks and stones. Now you broke your bones. <laughs> Miss Mia, that's funny. <laughs> hey, what's up, Randy? 
Lexi Lex says, this is crazy, LOL. She got pinned over the boyfriend for real, so now she get a, a messed up hip and she gets to sleep with his, uh, now he gets to sleep with his baby mama freely. He doesn't get to though. Why does he think that this is okay? That's definitely a daddy's girl. What's up? This mom's call me Dom. It's Dominique, y'all. Dom Stanless. Uh, what does this say? You go sit for it for sure. She ain't gonna stand for it. That's you hilarious. Go sit for it. <laughs> Monty says, God set them hips down. Leave that man alone because clearly he still want his baby mama. Right. She's supposed to be the ex for a reason. So why do you decide you're just gonna go back to smashing her? You've probably been smashing her this whole time. And that's why the uh, baby mama's mad that you uh still in his life like that. Ooh, Mama Sephora, you wrote in the front menace. seat. <laughs> that means that baby's bad and has a big face. Menace. Menace. Moon face menace. Menace. You got a bad baby. You're not doing a good job raising him. Slick Jafari said, why was the four-year-old in the front seat? Why was the four-year-old able to even put the car in drive? Here's what I was going to add. Okay. The fact that this baby put the car in drive validates the fact that it's a menace. <laughs> <laughs> so the truth hurt. And the that's why she hurt. wanted to fight. Physically and oh. emotionally. Jarrell says, I be getting mad over the subtle stuff. And these folks confuse whether they should get mad after witnessing full smashing. Mm. Randy says, moon face is a common insult. It derives from calling one a moon pie face. Randy? Never heard it. Never used either. Never got called either. Wait, moon face could be a white baby. Oh, slick Tafari. No. Nah. I was just thinking it was the shape. Yeah, I don't see the baby bit. Unless, let's go even more meta. What if the baby... Got a big face and acne. Now that's just crazy. Oh, bad skin, baby. With bad skin. Ooh. Got that Edward James almost skin with uh. the craters in it. Oh. All right, moving on because I don't even want to picture a baby with that face. Uh, let's go to this one. Which one is this? Um, let's see. Is it this one? What does it say? What's the first word? Okay, this is from Six Brown Chicks on Instagram, anonymously submitted. I had my kids for the weekend. I asked my girlfriend to babysit for a few hours while I went out and did my thing. Okay. It was her birthday weekend. I didn't have money to spend on her or mm. feed the kids. Mm. So I went to another female's house and I accidentally overslept. Mm. My girlfriend left my kids in the car while she went inside the casino and gambled. Ooh. She was arrested. My kids were put in temporary DCFS custody. My baby mama's <clears throat> was furious and threatened to prevent me from ever seeing my kids again. Meanwhile, my girl is waiting on me to bail her out. I told her that I'm trying to raise the money to bail her out, but I'm not. <laughs> Good Lord. I want her to stay in jail while I chill in her spot. Oh my God. I sleep better when she's not around. <laughs> my female friend comes over to cook. Wow, to the house you have with her? Oh my God. Life is good. I'm thinking of contacting the arresting officer to tell him about other crimes she's done to keep her in jail longer. Ooh. I feel this is my one shot to have this crib and build myself up to attract a better kind of woman. So should I tell the cops about my girl's other scams and the stolen items she has in this house? I'm not a bad guy. I'm just a broke guy trying to come up. Advice? Wow. I got some advice. Wow. Number one, grow some integrity. Wow, the what fact, a loser. The fact that this man would pawn his own children off. Wow. On essentially a babysitter who has a crib. Wow. <clears throat> just so he could go out and smash another girl. So these aren't even her kids? These aren't her, her kids. <sighs> then add to the fact that oh. he's willing to snitch on her just to, to keep her place. crib. Then to he, attract a better woman. He, you attract what you are, ladies and gentlemen. You attract what you feel you deserve as well. Oh my God, let me see. LMAO, one of them women gonna delete him. Green Ranger says, who's gonna pay the rent? Bandage says, that's my first question. Or is he gonna use the stuff that's stolen in the house to sell it to pay the rent? Because when you turn people in for crimes, you don't get a reward money for that. The cops be like, thanks. And then they go on with their day. The worst man, Andrea says, burn uh oh bum ass nigga <laughs> just cause says jordan taylor something positive i'm sure that shows you should always watch over your kids instead of asking help from your friends who gamble thank you jordan That's taylor true too also <clears throat> i'm not excusing her for leaving these children in jeopardy like you leave them in a car while you go inside an establishment to gamble it you was know her birthday weekend that means she should not have been alone with these kids they should have been with their mama she should you know what? I wonder if he asked her to babysit or if he just left them there. He just left them there. Because he said he asked her, but he probably just left her. It's her birthday weekend. And on top of that, you didn't get her anything for her birthday. 
Yeah, because you got the money. You could have stopped. You could have had the girl that's coming over to cook at the apartment. You could have had her cook something, and you brought that to the girl. At least that's showing some kind of effort. He doesn't respect her, and that's what it boils down to. He doesn't respect her. Ah, okay, good one. Let me go on to the next one because we have so much in store today. What does this one say? That was wild, though. He's out of pocket. Last one, and then we got a picture one, and then we move on. This one, six brown chicks. Rico's been in my life since high school. He cheated on me from day one. Mm. I never understood his unjustifiable confidence about his smash performance. He always whipping out his dehydrated worm for someone no. else. He has asthma, so his tongue game is lacking. You can't lick it if you can't breathe. Dang. His freaky fingers are crooked and limp. Okay. He bathes in cologne that lingers days after he's gone. So but he African. But, ooh, you sure you want to say that? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> His but he bathes in cologne that lingers days after he's gone. But I love Rico and I need him to be a better man. Rico has Rico has other kids, but I thought our baby would change him. The cheating has gotten worse. He says he can't tolerate our baby screams at night. He doesn't like when I breastfeed, he flatly told me. I like my kids when they can walk and talk and are potty trained. I can't relax around an infant. And I'll see, you'll see more of me when you lose the baby weight and get back to how you used to be. I've been with this man and his awful smashing for 10 years. How do I train him to do right? This is- That broke my heart for, uh, for her. This is unfortunate, but I know that it's not rare because women's bodies change. And because those first few years of having a baby, it's very difficult. The baby doesn't sleep. The baby can't do anything for itself. You have to do everything for that child. And it's really easy for one of the parents to be like, I'm going to tap out here and I'll be back when this baby can, you know, is in a softball game. I'll go to the games. So <clears throat> she wants to know how can she train him to be better? Because they've been together for 10 years and she thought they would get closer when she had a baby. They did not. Let me tell you something that very few couples are able to do. And this is of any age. And that is grow with one another. Okay. I applaud a couple, our favorite couple, as a matter of fact, Lexi, Lex, and Green Ranger, because mm -hmm. they've been together since high school. Mm -hmm. And they've been able to grow and evolve together and seem to be great communicators and remain in love with one another. That's not the common thing. Uh, I'll give you an example. There was a woman, keyword woman. I okay. was 21 and she was probably 30 something. And she had just gotten out of this uh, since high school relationship. Okay. And I thought she was so bad. And we started kicking it. And by kicking it, I'm talking about she let me schmack. And when I schmack, it was not good on my part, which I was thrown off because I was like, I've been out here slaying. Oh, you thought she was slaying? No, no, no. I, uh, I had been out there slaying. At what age? This is 21. Okay. I had been out there slaying. And then when you got to her, what happened? Oh, when I tell you she gave me nothing, like she wasn't, <laughs> she wasn't moaning, she wasn't giving me any kind of like bodily things, but like she was super wet. And I was like, yo, what's up? And she was like, oh, I just don't like having sex. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, you're so bad, right? And then uh, she was like, yeah, even when I was with him, I just didn't, that wasn't my thing. And I was like, well, this is destroying my confidence. She was like, it wasn't bad or whatever. It just wasn't like anything that I was excited about. And I was blown away. The point of me telling the story, <clears throat> She had such an emotionally immature personality. Like she was talking to me and she reminded me of a girl that I dated in high school. I was like, this feels really- And she's older. Young to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. she was older. And I say all of that to say, if you don't have somebody that you're evolving with, no matter how old you get, you're gonna seem emotionally immature. So with this woman saying, how can I train him? You can't. Now the next woman, unfortunately, can. That's too because bad. She put all that time in. She put all the time and effort in. But sometimes this is what you have to realize, men and women. Just because you put a lot of effort into somebody or time and energy does not mean that you're going to be the one to reap the benefit or the blessing of that person. Facts. Sometimes you got to just take that L and appreciate the W that God is going to give you well, in your life for helping somebody. Woo, that's a shirt right there. That is a shirt. It's like when you loan people money and they don't give you the money back. And you'd be like, oh, I'm about to end this friendship. You can end the friendship. God's still going to bless you even if that person doesn't. Oh, look at my baby. Y'all do know CT is hope. 
That's one of his Facebook old. pages. Let me see what y'all said about this last one. The second time I smashed her. It was only twice. The second time I smashed her. It was even better for me because now I went in knowing, oh, she's, she's not, not going to have fun. It, so it's all, it's all for me here. She's not going to have fun, but she's so beautiful. And, then and the, she's apparently moist. She was moist as an understatement. I was trying so to say it quite again. It was, it was dripping. So anyway, so afterwards, splash it was Splash Waterfall. Okay. Ludacris came on in the background. Wasn't no radio play. Uh, oh. So oh. that oh. second time. Oh. She had such an even better energy with it. Like she was like, like I knew she didn't like sex, but she was so overjoyed that we had shared that. She was like, "So what are you about to do?" I was like, "Well, not this again." But, uh, <laughs> the first time was an L. The second time was I know what this is about to be. Oh about to be no third. Lord, that was so funny. Great to look at. Though. All right, let me see what y'all are saying about these. This was from the second meme. It says he sounds like a scammer. Slick to far says, "Think about the kids." Autumn Reed says, Autumn Reed. About the second meme, he says, she says, snitch on her, pawn her jewelry in the lease and get the deposit back. Use the money to move into another spot. Drop all contact. Her male relatives are looking for you. <laughs> he can't afford another spot though, but I like how you think. Autumn Reed is clearly a criminal, just if you didn't know. Andrea Lilly says, I would have just called the police and said I came home and there were some random kids here. Then she wouldn't have gone to jail and they still would have been with a DHR. That would actually end the relationship too. To come home on your birthday, see the kids and be like, there's some random kids here. You well, they're not random. Them. They're his. But she's saying that's what she would have told the police. Oh, that's she could crazy. Enjoy her weekend. That Just for a birthday? <laughs> he may be the reason what he did to her. Try to end explain everything. Piss says she still let him repeatedly smash. Stop talking about your dude, madam. That's facts. Green Ranger says, how do these losers keep getting the box? Oh, if I don't know nothing else, it's that losers are going to always smash. Mm. Mm. So how do you train the man you've been with for 10 years who has bad smashing and too much cologne and all that? The way you train him is leave, Monty Respect. says. There was a girl who was super bad. Uh, she was a, a hot girl. Uh, she was a, a hot that? girl. Hit that? And she was really bad. And... Um, I remember the first time, this is when I was living in West Hollywood, and she had come through, and she was trying to go to the beat of her own drum, and I was like, hey, hey, what I are you doing? And she was like, what, I'm doing it. I was like, no, you're not. not let, me, doing it. let me just handle this. And uh, it was really bad. So I realized that I couldn't train her. All I had to do was tell her, let me lead the ship, and we'll have a good time. And we did. Well, I did. She did, too. It was like, this is the only time it's going to happen. I don't know if she did, too. Well, I guess we want to. <laughs> uh, okay, Randy, Randy says, never trust anybody named Rico. That is a really good point. Autumn Reed says, she had a baby with a low-budget Flavor Flav and let him mistreat her. She needs to kick him to the alley next to the dumpster and get her a guy with a MILF fetish. Ah, so a younger fellow at that. Okay, let's see. Slick to says you can't use the baby as a way to get closer to a person. Or was I hearing that right? That's exactly what she said. She it's thought true. he had kids with somebody else. She thought if she gave him a baby, it would keep him closer. And I feel how, I think women think that because if you date somebody who has a kid, you're going to hear them mention their baby's mama. And you're going to see how much love they have for their kids. So you might be thinking, oh, I will be attached to him forever too if I give him a child. But realize he'll be dating someone else, just like he's dating you with the kids with somebody else. Like it's not going to make him love you more. It just yeah. means he's stuck with these kids and responsibility for another eighteen years. Yeah. Green Ranger and Lexi, let's thank you for the hey, things you said. It's absolutely true. Y'all are very rare. Yeah. All right. What was y'all input on three months? I didn't. Ashley, you're late, and we didn't talk about it yet. CT talked in such detail about a smashing with another woman, and you're unbothered. Patrick, I am. Patrick, what, first of all, is this your first time watching the show? What are you, a narc <laughs> <laughs> or a simp? What's going on, fam? You want me to be jealous? Of, first of all, CT and I were really close friends for the first two years of knowing each other, from 2008 to 2010. When he lived in West Hollywood, it was a, it was within that time frame. So I knew him when this story took place, and that was my buddy. That was my guy. Also, so for him to tell the story now that we've been married for ten years, yeah, why would I care? It's also a luxury that I have that I can be myself in my relationship, my guy. So uh, I don't know if that's the same for you. Maybe you met your lady and you were immediately hiding who you were as a person. But uh, I don't have that uh, problem. Slick to far said the feds. Exactly. Man. Also, it's like if you don't see anybody else commenting stuff like this, yes, they know us already. But at the same time, it's like, 
What? Yeah, it always what be that. What kind of stempathon is he running? <laughs> Lexi Lex said it always be that one kid that reminds the teacher about the homework. <laughs> <laughs> That's Patrick. <laughs> But but you said something about giving us 10 pages, huh? Oh yeah, thank you, Patrick. You said you wanted us to work over the weekend. Patrick says, I'm saying most women would be. You're right, Patrick. She's not most women. And if she was most women, we wouldn't be doing this show. Exactly. All right, last one, then we'll get into our guests in the Also, that'll role. help you get into her DMs or her draws, my guy. You that kind of behavior. Not interested. Man, Randy. it's like, <laughs> whenever guys say stuff like that, it always makes me think like, what what was the, the genuine want from leaving a comment like that? Was it supposed to be, oh, you're right, Patrick. CT, finger wagging. I don't like this. And Nick, don't do that again. How dare and I you cannot stand. talk about not being a virgin but when we met? What was your desired outcome? I don't know, but Randy says, Patrick, bro code, my brother. I love that. Bro Man. code. Patrick said, damn, okay, Patrick, it's all good. Thank you for watching the show. We hope that this is not your last time watching episode 80. Catch up on some other episodes. You know what? Enjoy our clips. Don't you say it. Enjoy our clips on my Instagram and my Facebook page. Don't you say it. You know what I was going to say. Oh, dudes like him are the worst, Brian says. Y'all leave Patrick alone. He's free to comment how he likes. He, he didn't say anything negative. He didn't cuss at us. He didn't call us a moon face menace. He's he did fine. not call us a moon face menace. Fine. All right, this last one is going to be uh, one of the main questions of today. It is from a meme that was on Spirit Word, Spiritual Word, how do you say it? Yeah. And it was posted in my Discord. I have a Discord, and it is, um, there's a room called Marriage Go Round in it. Join the Discord for free. This is what Miss Twerk Something posted. It says, oh. an Atlanta hairstylist is going viral after her date, invited her to an NBA basketball game then left him because the seats he bought is too far away from the court. Now look at this picture, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the shot. Look how far away this is. Yeah. If you were going on a date, and I'm going to assume this is her first date, if somebody said, would you like to go to this game, the home team is playing, whatever, Laker game for me, and you say yes, you're excited, you tell your girls, you go, you get there, you're way up there. She left, and then she posted on her page, am I tripping? What the F? And it went viral. What do you think? Is she wrong? Because honestly, if they had stayed home and watched it on TV, she would have had a better view. It would have been a way better view. <laughs> but it's the intention. This man took her on a date. He didn't do the typical dinner in a movie. He didn't do the typical come to my house, let's watch TV and chill. He didn't do the typical let me come over, you cook for me. He spent money and time on taking her. It's okay, baby. We're married. It's fine. <laughs> but she did used to, before we were married, you used to be like, yeah, for this special engagement, engagement I'm coming over, you're going to cook, and you're going to buy the groceries, <laughs> and you're going to wash the dishes. And I was like, what am I? What am I, I didn't out of that? say those things. But that's what, that was All I attention. said was, I want to come over and you cook. I remember saying that, which right. is also the goal of this guy. And I was but, like, are you going to buy the groceries? You were like, no, no, I don't have the money for that. And I was like, well, can you wash the dishes when we're finished? You were like, no, I don't want to do that. And no, I was I'm like, washing the dishes. But I also was, I was being, I, this is what I've always gotten credit for. I was women. direct and you were honest. I was always honest with every woman. I mm -hmm. never let anything on. I never let you think that I was somebody that I wasn't. I prepared you day one. The only thing that I went back on is buying the groceries. Outside of that, I'm not washing no you don't, dishes. You don't lift a finger. I've washed dishes. You've done it a couple times just to be mad at me. But and, and a couple times out of 15 years is not enough. It's not enough. The times that I've done it, have you've been, been like, mad. You've been like, well, I'm gonna show her. She hasn't done these dishes in two days. They've been <laughs> sitting here. Watch me wash these dishes and show her how it's done. I'm like, oh, I'm so mad. You got me, babe. Yeah. The dishes are clean now, and I didn't have to do it for a change. Two days is crazy. It is, but when you imagine all the stuff I have going on, you yeah. understand. So I went back on that, but yeah, I mean, I've never, I wanted you to know. <laughs> but to this young lady, this is what I think, man. Let's go back to this picture. If you're just tuning in, this is episode number 80 of the Marriage Go Round podcast. Congratulations on 80 episodes. Life. Thank you, baby. Congratulations to you, too. Real life married couple, Tangerine and CT. We haven't argued ever on this podcast. We get along so well. We are best friends. Don't go back to episode one. We are not, or seven, or 19. Don't go to any um, episode before 30. <laughs> we just argued last week. Don't go to any episode before 77. <laughs> anyway. Start at 77. Oh, wait. I'm clicking on. the wrong thing. That's the takeover. This is how far the seats were. 
and she left because they were too far. What's your opinion, babe? So here's the thing. To give you more of the story, it was a video that she uh, she posted, mm -hmm. and she was so indignant and so ungrateful and was just talking about him and saying she left him. However, she stayed for the rest of the game. She went to some other nosebleed seats by herself and watched the rest of the game. She went to go get herself something to eat from the little cart, went back to those nosebleed seats. So she seats. wouldn't spend her money and still have bad seats. Exactly. Instead of enjoying the date with this guy. Exactly. So that was in itself childish Very. and immature, just as we're dealing with somebody who would make a video or a post like that in yes. the first place. Um, two, I feel like anytime I've been to a sporting event, rarely do I remember who won or a specific play. I remember the company that I was with. And you are having a great time with the people that you went with, yeah. or in her case, the person. Yeah. So you're going to have conversation, and the basketball game is your backdrop. She doesn't strike me as somebody who knows the the uh, the league stats. <laughs> so her going to the game, it shouldn't matter where you sit, because it looks like you're probably just wanting a picture. So you should mm. really be more into your date anyway, mm. no matter where you sit. Also, it was a free ticket for you. It don't matter where y'all were going. And I, as a woman who loves when guys are creative about their dates, I'm down. I'm going to go. I might even joke about the seats if I date you again and be like, I oh, remember the first time we went on a date and you had me in faraway seats. But I'm going to stay and see what else you have in store for me. Because it could have been some amazing surprise that he did after that. Or we could have just had such a great conversation and we could have. Let me tell you something. There's no more loyal of a fan than the people who are in the nosebleed section. They are the loudest. They are the rowdiest. They have so much fun. They hoot and holler. They they do the, the the body bumps. They have such a good time up there. So she should have stayed and let the night play out. To find out she stayed but didn't stay near him is ridiculous. Near it's rude, too. And I'll give you this. I've had the luxury of sitting in a, in a box before. I'm sure you have as well. And when you sit oh, in the box seat, just kidding. that's a good ball from you. <laughs> Because I always hate when women say pause to like man stuff. Like they'll be like, yeah, so I was out with this guy and his thing came out, pause. And it's like, what are you doing? You're a girl. That's never going to be funny. Like come up with your own stuff. Yes. But like that, that was a good pause because yes. it was talking about women. Yes. So being <laughs> in box seats. Because <laughs> I've been in some box. <laughs> being in box seats. Uh, not a big difference from nosebleed to the box seats. Yeah. The only difference is the seats have a little bit more cushion. That's the only difference. You're both looking at that projector right across, unless it's a screen inside the box. But the yeah. nosebleed section is literally, I, where I can see the other nosebleed people. So you're just in a fancy nosebleed section. Yeah. So even if she was in a box, it's like, come on, baby girl. You guys can look on my Instagram page and see that I, I used to go uh, to the Laker games right before the pandemic closed out. I used to go to a lot of them and we would sit in a very famous person's a VIP box section. And we were really in the middle of the stadium. So it was like, you had to really look at the screen like he's saying to see it. So you can't look it's down not, on that floor. Yeah, it's too far away. But let me see what you guys are saying about her before we bring in these guests. This one says, oh, <laughs> Bandersnatch talking about Patrick. She says, well, we lost to Patrick. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, Pitt said, yes, she's tripping. Latasha says she was wrong. Randy said that picture looks like Google Maps. That's hilarious. It was very far. Uh, Green Ranger said my boy took her to a Pistons game and got seats on the moon. That's hilarious. Bandersnatch says he may have had free tickets. Those are the giveaway ticket seats. They could have been free, but does that or does that change anything? It's also, still, does it matter? It's a free ticket to you, too. Ooh, I could have given the free ticket to somebody else. Facts. Jordan Taylor says, unless she should be thankful for the tickets he has bought for the both of them. Yes. An appreciation check. What's up, Aaron? Appreciate you being here. Argument counter, dot, dot, dot. Thank you. We haven't argued. Pitt says, you watched the Jumbotron from that height. Also, plenty of time to converse. It's about the atmosphere. I agree, Pissed. Autumn Reed says, I have done this. Got invited to a Laker game. His seats were top of the nosebleeds. I left and bought better tickets at the box office. He refused to come down to my seats. But here's the thing. But you at least invited him down. Exactly. You, you went and got better seats and invited him down. Now, him staying up there was just pride and ego. Me? I'm I think like, my oh, feelings would be hurt, God. though. If I brought you, because what if that was all I could afford? Like, I spent the last of my paycheck. I did my bills. I paid my tithes. And then I made sure my phone stayed on. And with the rest of my money, I got tickets to take you to the Laker game. And when you got there, you was like, oh, <laughs> oh no, no, no. This is too far away. And you got up and left and was like, you want to come down here? Your feelings would be hurt? I think it's about how you do it. Like, what you just said, if you express that to me, 
I would not only still get the tickets, but <laughs> I would give you your money back. Yeah, you got to give tickets. the money back because yeah. now it's like I wasted my money on But you. that's only if you expressed it in a in a respectful way. If you make it seem like I owe you something, then you're not giving But it either back. way, you know I spent money on these tickets that you don't like, and now you're spending money on some other tickets. So either way, you're, I'm wasting my money if I go down here to sit with you. If you, as the woman, had bought the tickets initially, and that's where the double standard comes in. Okay. If you have bought the tickets in a nosebleed in general, I would have stayed a nosebleed because for a woman to buy a date for a man like that is so sweet and kind. It is. That it's like, oh, we rocking out here. Because again, I don't care about this game. Uh, I'm somebody that likes to watch my sports and sports entertainment on television because you get way better angles. But uh, if it's a team I don't care about, then sure, we'll go to the game because I'm just kicking it with y'all. But if you would have bought the tickets and we were in the nosebleeds, I'm kicking it in the nosebleeds. I'm just grateful to have a ticket. Ah, all right. Let me see. With context, she sounds dumb. Um, She's okay. young, and that's that's the thing. There, it's the responsibility of you women that are over twenty five okay. to educate these stupid young girls. They're so dumb, and it's y'all's fault because y'all be posting y'all's uh, successful lifestyles online. They see that. And they begin to act as if they deserve it as opposed to work for it like you did. You feel like she's under 25? Yes. I know she is. Okay. Okay. She she's is. an idiot. <laughs> okay. Not to say that everybody under 25 <laughs> is an like. idiot, but get close. Isaac says, me, I'm moving to her seats. Just saying. Okay, good to know. Uh, Bandersnatch says, the nose bleeds at Staples are literal death seats. You need a safety net and a parachute to feel okay. Oh, my goodness. I would try to teach or educate some women under 25, but I got to work on myself first and take the advice first. That's what Ashley White says. I know you're still learning, Ashley. Vandersnatch says you end up watching it on TV in the boxes anyway. You do. Right. That's my point. Um, what was this one? Talk that stuff, Tange. Talk that stuff, Harlem says. Monty says, when you ask me on a date to the game, yes, the seats should be good. Those seats were for a struggling single mother trying to take the boys to experience a live basketball game. I'm just saying. That's so true. That's so true. That may, that's, I felt that, Monty. That's so true. A single mom who wants to say, you know, babe, come on, kids, we going to the game, and you got to get, like, three seats or four seats. Those are the seats, Monty. Let me tell you something. I can only imagine. Mm. One of my mom's second jobs used to be at a, at a gas station by our house in uh, Auburn Hills where the Pistons used to play at the Palace. And she would get offered free tickets all the time. I never knew where the seats were because even as a kid, I was not into sports like that to be like, yeah, mom, let's go to the game. Mm -hmm. But uh, the stuff that I was into, like I didn't do the sporting event thing until far into my 20s. But what she did take me to was uh, plays and concerts. Cute. And the plays that we would go to, we had cool seats. And then uh, the concerts, I remember one concert down at Shane or Comerica Park, there were, we were up there, but it was still great seats because we could see the stage clearly. But yeah, the single mom seats is crazy. I felt that money. Yeah. Talking about CT. I'd have I been think. pissed if we went to, if we went to those games and we were in those bleeds though, even as a kid, because I'd have wanted to be closer and I would not have wanted to resent my mother for- That's your first time going, you would have been there and been like, I want to be down there? That's what I'm saying. I don't even want to. I'm glad that I didn't go, so I don't even have that mindset to think. I hope you. I don't think you would as a child. I can't chance it. Oh there goodness. are certain things I remember about being young, and some things that I don't. And I'm glad that I don't know how I would have reacted. I'm glad you didn't either. Randy says, speaking of what we were talking about that when I was dating you, I'm gonna come over, and you gonna cook, and you gonna buy the groceries. I'm gonna change my approach. If it's good enough for CC, it's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was not good enough. I actually sat him down. We had a long talk yeah. about uh, giving and taking in a relationship. Yeah. He explained to me what his budget was, and that was his reasoning of what he was saying. And I said, okay, we're going to come up with a bucket list, a dating bucket list. And we had three levels. One level was free things we could do. One level was things we could do for $20 or less. And another one was uh, more than $20. And keep in mind, I was somebody that I liked to stay home. I would go to the comedy club and go home because I have food at home that I bought already that I could just cook and chill. He's talking about chicken in the forum and grill and what, eggs? No, I had a I had a mixed vegetables, 
broccoli. Oh, the frozen uh, vegetables you would get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, we talked about it. I was cool it. with it. You weren't cool with it. I had a couple it. of Teddy Grahams, too. <laughs> that was dessert. <laughs> so, I ever wanted what? something sweet, I had some Teddy Grahams. What he's saying is about liking to be home. When he was dating a young lady, young lady, he would like to go to her house so that he could smash and then go back to his house. Yeah. That was his I wouldn't idea even have date. girls cooking. I would just like, sometimes they'd be like, I never even asked them to cook. I would just go over there, smack, maybe stay the night, wake up, uh, go work out, and go home. This is how I got the ring, I guess. I cooked, and they didn't. Let's oh, bring so in good. some of the people. Because there was another girl who cooked, but her attitude wasn't together. She was out of control. I'll tell you that story in another, another episode. All right. Pitt says, just don't be like a date I had and fall down the steps. And I stayed with her children while they took her to the infirmary. Infirmary. She made it back the next quarter, but was super embarrassed. Oh, that's the, the nightmare. Especially if you dress cute at the games and you go into a stadium, you got heels on, you trying to go down them steps. Every woman fears falling down the steps. To have somebody as your Here's date sneakers. that actually failed, oh my goodness. Unless you're in the box or on the floor, wear sneakers, men or women. Oh, and um, Autumn Reed finished. He also knew I'm a lifelong Laker fan and I was going to be into the game. If you're going to stay up there and sulk with the random pigeons, then it ain't going to work between us. Wow. Random pigeons because it's so far up. Wow. Ooh, Reed. What's up, Bilal? Thanks for coming back. All right. Slick Jafari. I love that on Reed. <sighs> I don't get the outing him about the date either instead of telling him and not dating again. I know, right? Slick Jafari, why would you have to put it on the internet that he brought you to that game? I get you. Slick Jafari. I miss you. Talk. Yeah, you called him Jesus yesterday on Tangerine Stop Out. Look at him. Yeah. He got the Jesus piece on. He got the hair, the locks looking amazing. He had on a white top yesterday. He looked like the Masonic. Did he make you jealous? I don't get jealous. You do get jealous. You just don't I'm admit just it. I'm alert the hospital. Okay. <laughs> that means he got jealous. <laughs> that means he got jealous. It's Looks okay. Like my hair he, he cut his locks Looks and like they're not that back. long anymore. And now he sees me looking at your locks and he feels some kind of way. Looks it's like okay, my baby. Hair back. It's okay. Uh, he he, he been there, bro. You won't get back. there. When his hair comes back <laughs> and his weight comes off, you I don't want to hear gonna look nothing. Like I'm not going to look like Slick Tafar. <laughs> Sir Slick in the house, y'all, Isaac says. Sir Slick, Ashley White said. The son of man, Miss Mia says. Chicken and Foreman Grill still constitute as a food and a cooking apparatus. Yes, Randy. Not the Teddy Grahams. Delicious, it Isaac says. I had cinnamon. I had chocolate. It's like a fancy towards the end. She just came for his struggle meal essentials, LOL. I'm sorry, Callie. I had to. Uh, I don't get OK, here we go. Slick Jafari, thank you for your patience. You've been in here a long time. We have to get the update. You, ladies and gentlemen, He's happy 313 day. What does that mean, sir? Happy um, Detroit day. Yeah, happy Detroit day. Is that a real thing? Yeah. Oh, well, you didn't tell me. You're not from Detroit. Yeah, but I'm not, and he's told us. It's March 13th every year. Oh, well, thanks for telling me. I've been with you all the time. I never knew. Well, I celebrate in private. <laughs> I'm sorry that you <laughs> needed to do that in private. I didn't know it was a thing <laughs> that I needed to celebrate in front of you. You clearly don't celebrate. Welcome to the show. Apparently, you're in Detroit, Michigan. Give us an update on your relationship, sir. I want to be all up in your business. Um, well, uh, call real quick, please, sir. you ain't going nowhere. Oh, hold on, <laughs> this is the BS. Go ahead, baby. Yeah, hospital. <laughs> uh, Can y'all hear me? <laughs> Can y'all hear me? My, my signal dropped. Oh, darn. That's a bad we'll hospital. All right, Slick Jafari, what you been up to in the dating world, sir? Um, I haven't really been out here like that, like that. Um, but I have been getting signs. I've been asking for signs. Um, and I've been getting approached by 35 and up. So I think that's my sign to stick to my guns and, you know, complete the original plan and find somebody that's older than me. How old are you for the audience? I'm 30 in, on July 5th. So you're 29. Yes. And your favorite age range to date women is have you dated somebody in their 40s before yes the woman that caught you in your uh boxers or her son caught you yes. in boxers in the cereal how old was she she was 40 she was in her 40s i think 42 43. okay so you like them around there but you're gonna do 35 and up yes did did you meet anybody that approached you recently 35 and up that you're interested in that you like exchange information with that you're gonna take out no um but it's just making me feel good like to know that I can get approached and I could still, you know, 
um i can i can i'm still in the game you know i don't have to actually sit back and you know do what i wanted to do but i can actually get approached and me not actually go out there and be like hey how you doing you know um, hope you have a nice day you're looking great today i love your outfit then how you get them <laughs> uh, things of that nature so do you prefer to sit back and let somebody come to you as you like aggressive women as opposed to you choosing who you are? No, I'm actually the aggressor, but it just feels nice to actually be approached. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I've been approached by women like 35 and up. And that just, you know, gives me the sign to be like, yeah, let me let me go back to my original plan. Lead a okay. young ones for the young ones. What's too old for you, sir? Will you do 50? Yes. Will you do 54? Yes. Will you do I've 55? Seen, I've seen some beautiful, <laughs> almost 60 year old women. I mean, I've seen like beautiful 60 year old women still in shape, still, you know, they're fit. They, I have met women like that. So, yes. Do you want to have kids? Do you have kids? No, I have no kids. And yes, I want to have kids. Okay. Because if you, if you start dating a 60 year old woman, you might not have kids with her. You might have to be your stepdaddy if she to her kids who are grown. I've thought who about have, who also have kids. I've thought about that. <laughs> CT, you so quiet. Say something. <laughs> Listen, man. You know, don't nobody love you more than me, man. Uh, I'm gonna just be honest with you, brother, and I'm telling you this as someone that has lived the life that you're living, <laughs> and I just want you to know the future of it. Uh, I've dated women who were a little older than me. I dated women who were a lot older than me. All of that. It's real fun dating the girls that you know can't get pregnant and it's real carefree and it's a great time that they're more established than you and they got their life together and all of that. Uh, but there's going to come a time where you want someone closer to your age for you to build a life with. <laughs> I'll just say that. So, you know, have fun, but 30 is coming in a couple of months. And you need to think about <laughs> you need to think about what you really want in life, man. I gotta read some of these comments for you, Slick. This wow. one says, I feel I feel like he knows them Jamaicans from the airport video. That's Cali Grown. Uh bro, just cause says nowadays some women stop having kids at 35. So be wary of that. Autumn Reed says Slick's age limit is two days before the funeral home. Wow, Autumn Reed. <laughs> see he's hanging in there, Jordan Taylor says. Banderson says, how you going to have youngins with a dry poom poom guy? <laughs> Dang, that's I can't. Two days before the funeral home. Hey, hey, looking fabulous. What's up, Joris Richardson? And I love me an old man. We Remember, Bandersnatch has a crush on Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman so she can't judge. Nana going to be like, Baby, don't pull my leg back like that. Jarrell, we TV back. stop. <laughs> all right, so you're going to get you an older woman. I want to hear all about it. I don't know. Do you take them on a different place for a first date than you do somebody who's in their 20s? Somewhere before 5 p.m. Ouch. You talking like they're a senior citizen. You got to take them out before it get dark. No. Nah, I'll <laughs> take them um, to where to places they that. They like, you know, like if they tell me they like flowers or stuff like that, I'll take them to a, a um, it's this place in Michigan to where they have fields of just flowers. So you could just walk down and look at the flowers, touch them, smell them. And, you know, they yeah. have a variety. So it's like I, I take them to where places that they inquire about, you know. That's smart. You listen, you pay attention. Yeah, that's half the battle. That's smart. I, I want to, um, better set doesn't want kids. That's why she can have a crush on She me. has a kid already. Okay, up uh, that. She, she posted this as if she doesn't. You're yeah, right. She does. She, she has, has a kid a already. She don't want no more. I understand that. <laughs> oh, let me see. Nana gonna be like, baby, don't pull my back. Where's the other Nana one? I lost it. Uh, I can imagine what the cookout gonna look like <laughs> when grandma bring home somebody younger than Junebug, her youngest son. Mm, Randy, he's, he's already experienced it. He's already, oh, there it is. Nana going to think Jesus has come home with her. Oh, mm. Sally. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. Um, also, um, I just wanted to go in on old girl in this basketball game. Now, look, 
I'm pretty sure they talk, they talked before the day. You know, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they planned and everything, but let's just say she didn't know about the seats. Why not talk to him? You know what I'm saying? Why why record and stand there? And also you went and got the same or equivalent of seats at the same game and spent your money when you it could have been for free. Like just think of the thought. You know what I'm saying? Now, what's the end game? You probably got dudes now that don't want to take you nowhere. Right. Right. Like, so what's the end game of you actually out and do? Because now it's going to be a thousand dudes out here like, oh, I can't even take you to a game without you recording or tripping. Or we don't like Cheesecake Factory, apparently, because that's been complained about online. You can't take us to a game unless you got some really good seats, which might, might be your whole rent money for all we know. We want a Birkin bag. We asking a lot, this new generation of girls. Also, you got to remember, women came out of the woodwork and said, I ain't no problem with Cheesecake Factory because those were adult women. The young, dumb girls are the ones that are saying the stuff that we see online. And those are the women that need to be taught by older women, number one, to shut up. And number two, <laughs> to move differently. Every time I see a younger <sighs> dude, I have a conversation with him because that's what older dudes did for me when I was younger. So it's like the fact that there are so many young girls out here, maybe they are talking to them. Maybe they just don't listen. Yeah. They just don't listen. I got some uh, comments about what you say you would like to do with the uh, young ladies on the first date, taking them to look at flowers. Uh, Bandersnatch says, smelling flowers with somebody's grand grand is wild. <laughs> 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 uh, Andrea Lilly says, is what it sounds like. Look uh, at flowers. Is it I know it costs. It costs now. Okay, don't don't disrespect my man. It costs it now. Costs now. When you get oh, to touch you, them and take them home, yeah, they cost. Okay, okay, George. Thank you for sending twenty stars on Facebook. Mwah, 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 mwah. These kisses are just for you. My stars are activated. Super chat, super stickers, Venmo, Cash App, all that is activated. Thank you so much. Slick is not about to tell y'all how he gets them. Oh, Isaac, you think he lying? She probably make a mean pot of collard greens and cornbread. Randy said, uh, "Okay." Patrice says, "Is that Shirley Temple curls with locks? Black Jesus vibes, but it's working." What's up, Patrice? Did you curl? Did you curl the locks? Did you um, break? No, they were uh, in a design, and I just took them down. And ah, I see, I see. My baby gonna be doing that again. Y'all can't see the back of his head. But this, it's a fire design. Look at this it's, like, it's a lot going on back here. It's fire. Y'all couldn't tell. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate that, brother. Uh, that's the times we're in. People feel like they need to post everything and get opinions right then and there. Sad, yeah. really. Yeah. The Botanical Gardens is free as F. <laughs> but yeah. those girls are the same girls that will go. The ones who will go on their phone and post a video online are the same girls that will call their family and be like, yeah. So then he did this. And it's like, uh, yeah. Keep your family and friends out of your relationship. Facts. That can be a whole nother topic. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Sir Slick? Um, no. Nah, I thank y'all. Appreciate y'all and love y'all. Oh, back, we love man. you back. The fire. I wish you could come out here in May to hang out with all of us. We'll yeah, see man. you next time. For Bye. Sure. We got to meet this guy. And let's to get to these man. next two people. But I want to remind you, if you did not know, Team Tangerine and Team CT, Team Takeover, coming to Hollywood, the, la the Memorial Day weekend in May, we're going to be doing a lot of fun things. And we are organizing in my Discord, in the Cali Trip Room, Pist has found a cool Airbnb. You guys can share. It's only a couple hundred dollars a night. So if you share that, what is that? Like 30 bucks? It could be $30, $40 a night per person. So yeah, I want I'm gonna add you to the Instagram group with Team CT to organize things. You know, that that's not my strong suit. It's 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 not. All right, let's go to these next two people. Hey people, hit that like button, share this video, and subscribe. Thank you, Isaac. Appreciate that. Uh Joris is saying bye to you. Reminds him of Barry White, but okay. Joris, you always on some 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 funny stuff. All right, who we picking? Pick one. Bam. Welcome to the show. Episode 80. Cobra Tay. Cobra Tay. A blessing wherever I go. Hashtag Team CT all day. What's up, Cobra Tay? What's going on, y'all? Um, I just want to go on that video real quick and I'm gonna um get a little update and edge or something. Okay. First of all. Girl is out of pocket. That that's that's number one. Girl is straight out of pocket. Yeah. For you to record, dude, and out him just like that and burst that man, like, oh, he got me these seats. First of all, if y'all talk and then plan that whole thing, and if you knew that that was supposed to see again, why would you even go? I don't. I don't think 
he told her where the seats were. I think that was a surprise to her. Well, that, was a, man, that was a surprise. Woo. Yeah, girl, you know, embarrass yourself all over the internet. People ain't going to take you out no more. Exactly. I'm just saying, should, um, in my opinion, if that's all you had, then hey, you should have enjoyed it. Me, on the other hand, since I work at the arena, at my arena, I would have got full. I can get floor seats. I can get tickets. That's no problem for me. We need to go to his city, Baltimore. Hey, look, CFG Bank Arena. I do the show. Look, I set up for everything, so I can get the best seats. Okay, he's like, a catch, ladies. He's letting you know he's a catch. You get the best. Hey, seats. Ain't, no, ain't no problem for me. But um, look, I just that that was just embarrassing. Like, come on now, you, you're not gonna be don't. Embarrass that man like that, like exactly. He tried. He tried. He tried. He tried. He tried. He did his best. You know, he, he he doing the thing out here. He, he like listen, man. I'm, I'm trying to pressure you, take you to a, a game. No other dudes out here doing that. You know, Ooh, trying to do okay. something for you. If you had a man taking you to floor seats, where is he? Where is he now? Great point. Where was the guy before this guy? Since you got it like that, yeah, yeah. This might be our hey. first time at a game. We don't even know. Uh, what so, did you want to update us on, sir? So, just a little update for real. Um, I've been, you know, well, I've been, uh, you know, working hard at work for real. You know, we got a lot of events and everything going. Um, I am getting back to my workout regimen, okay. you know. Um, so, got to get this body tight, core cool tight, you know, get these, get everything working out. But I will have my flight. I will my flight. First of all, I have my flight next week when I get paid. So next time I get paid, I'm gonna have my flight ready. Cause Colbert is coming to Cali. Yay! Um, I'm sorry. Autumn Reed says Baltimore doesn't even have a basketball team, so you can't even have a basketball game in the, the arena you work in. We have CIAA, and we got the Big Three coming on June 29th. So, so there. we got basketball. So there, it's just not a National Basketball Association. You yeah. tell her. And yeah. concert still come. Yeah, you tell her. All right, know, so you're going to get your paycheck. You're going to get your tickets. You're going to be here in May. We're going to make sure that we do something for you to meet or send a video or something for Miss Ayana, the artist, because you're going to be out here. So we got to coordinate that. She is a Gemini, so her birthday will be like two weeks after you're here. Let me text. I'm going to text her right now. Um, so just so you know, it'll be around her birthday. My birthday. We're both Gemini's. Um, meanwhile, Ashley. Uh, Ashley White said he definitely ready for Ayana. I didn't even see this uh, message that she posted. Uh, she got to get back to you at TEW. Green Ranger, you're funny. Tay got the seats for the cheeks. <laughs> I hope Tay don't be smashing chicks. Tay, you don't be smashing chicks, right? No. All I do is go home, go to work, come back home. Chill, get on the game with CT if you on. We'll get on the game and play, you know, just chill. That's it. You don't be smashing. I love it. Good for you. A Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a homebody. I ain't got time for that guy. Make my money and get back here. Got to okay. make that money. Okay. Got to make that money. Okay. Uh, B Pist had asked the question, am I in the group CT? Uh, Pist. So here's what I did for the members of Team CT. You know, we're in a, we're in a group chat on Instagram. So I hit everybody and said, hey, yo, if you come into L.A., let me know in a separate DM. They all messaged me that they were coming, and uh, I created a separate group chat for people who are coming, right? If you would like to be in that group chat, just DM me on Instagram, and I'll add you to that group, and then you guys can compare notes. I'm going to add Tangerine to the group as soon as the show is over, and she's going to also coordinate with y'all coordinating over here with us and uh why know. can't they just be in the discord in the cali trip room and coordinate with this i'll tell you i'm gonna bring you in and then you just tell them that okay yeah okay. all right because piss is doing a great job piss is doing a great job he's a friend he's of the a show. friend of the show and he's already been out here he was out here for my birthday two years ago at yeah. my party Came to my, uh, with my i saw him in may from my show when i did in detroit yeah. came up from shy town oh, exactly he's amazing yeah. Oh, black man don't ever get credit. Zach or Chadwick took you. She would have been so quiet. You, you could hear her mouth uh, piss on cotton ball. Randy said, that's funny. Oh, if Chadwick had her up in them seats, I think she would have still did a video. I can't believe I'm out here with the, the black man. <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like, 
some some people are, are dating now just to get attention instead of what yeah. a date is meant for which is a connection i'm very fortunate that my dating was done by the time social media came around and uh all of this stuff i would not have survived i would literally be in a million blogs if i was dating right now because i would be the one giving these girls a piece of my mind let me tell you something, you, you, yeah. you moon face menace. You, <laughs> you would be viral. How dare you be uh, unappreciative of what I give you? <laughs> you would be. Just because says. I saved about Teddy Graham's money for this. Teddy Graham's? Oh, Teddy, Teddy Graham's. <laughs> Just because says, yeah, Ashley, you trying to see the game from the ground up is what Tay is saying. Hey, I don't know, Ashley. I don't know, Ashley. Autumn Reed says CIA, CIAA and Big Three courtside seats are maybe $100 at the most. Hey, this girl, first of all, of I pocket. guarantee you the girl from that post couldn't afford that. The food that she got were just those <laughs> chicken tenders. Now, here's the thing. When you go to an arena, they got other food options. So the fact that she got chicken tenders, let me know where her pockets were. So she had no right to talk down on that man for anything. Hilarious, I agree. Andrea Lilly says, floor seats, you finna get topped off courtside. Oh, word up. Wow, good to know. You hey, might want to take uh, Andrea Lilly to the games. <laughs> pull up the schedule. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. The Pistons are going to do it. Yeah. <sighs> That's funny. All right, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead, Corporate Yeah, I mean, like, we get, we do get concerts. We get wrestling events, too. So, and I'm always at floor seats for wrestling events. Well, oh, if you ain't called us about that. We'll fly in. That's my main spot right there. Um, but my question is though, and it's it's kind of going with that. If you knew that you only had a certain amount of money to go to an event, and you know you tr you know little like look, if you explain the situation to them, say hey look. I only got a certain amount of money and I'm, I'm well, going to this event and you see the seats like how she said with a, a good seat but not that high up would you be mad with like why did it's you get these situation seats? of that young lady yeah some something like that but it's like a different event like maybe like a, a concert to uh your favorite artist so what's the question? Oh, a concert. If if you talked about it ahead of time and somebody took you on seats that were really high up, would you be mad? Is that the question? Yeah. But no, it was a I've, been, yeah. I've been explained to a lot of times about going to concerts or going somewhere about the seats. I'm like, yo, the seat. Oh, my first baseball game uh, in 2022, 21. Richard was like, hey, these are not good seats. But we're gonna have he a good time, you, so and I was like, prepared. "Bet, like, yeah, I went anyway. I went. I was ahead of time. I was early because I was so excited for the camaraderie and to just see a baseball game. And the seats that we ended up getting were better than the nosebleeds because not a lot of people go to baseball games. So yeah. we were supposed to sit in a different place, but we ended up getting closer. I used to be able to move down better seats too when I was uh, going to sporting events when I was like a teenager because. The people who buy those or have season seats, season tickets don't show up until like the the playoffs, and so you could always just go hop in your seats back in the day. My mom would tell me about seats, but all the seats were always good. I'm just thinking about that one concert where we were higher up, but it, we could we could see everything. Uh, but every time, like I remember, she took me to see uh, Jackie Wilson, "Lonely Teardrops," a play at the oh, Fox wow. Theater, and those seats were great. Let me tell you something. I always get front row, orchestra pit, floor seats. I do the best I can when I go somewhere now that I'm an adult. Um, and also because sometimes I would work events that would get me, you know, good seats. Being an adult who chooses good seats and being friends with someone named BT Kingsley, <laughs> who chooses terrible seats. He's a bad chooser. Has humbled me because he'll have me at a concert where I'm behind a speaker in the audience with cameras in front of us. And he'd be like, these are good seats, right? These are good seats, huh? And I'm like, I gave you how much money to get these seats for me, sir? We went to see, we went to see some concert that had like seven or eight people on the Oh, that lineup. was a screen tour, Bow Wow. Yes, but he wanted to get there early because BT Kingsley's in love with Day 26. He's not in love with them, he loves them. He's in love You're with Day 26. Like that. He's in love He's with Day 26's music, not the, not the guy. Yeah, yeah. So we had to go early 
Thank God, because they started early. They <laughs> were on, they were on stage before the show started. That's how that's how much respect they got from the from the rest of the people. But our seats were so to the side of the stage and behind something. So to answer your question, I wasn't happy about it, but I stayed and I had a good time and we had a ball because we were together. Me, him, Courtney, Nicole, whose birthday? No, I'm sorry, Courtney. Uh, what's her name? Elite Courtney. Hey, Courtney. So many Courtney's. It's, it is Courtney, the comedian. Yeah, Courtney Elise. It's not Courtney Elise. And it's that's not Courtney, Courtney that's Nicole. That's from Sketches. Nah, Dang. Courtney Elise. Our Courtney friend Courtney, the comedian Courtney. Anyway, Courtney Haynes. Courtney Haynes. Courtney Haynes, me, you, and like three other people. We had a ball. I wouldn't get mad. I would stay, but I'd talk mess about him. BT loves Day 26. He swears up and down that them and 112 are the best groups, hands down. Thank you, Ashley. Right. You know what it is. Crazy. I think I lost my mind today. Yeah, I like Day 26 as well. Okay. Who knew? Uh, it was a Day 26 concert. It was not Bandersnatch. It was Scream. BT oh, wait. never pick seats again. <laughs> wait, that's the one Bandersnatch went with us. BT there for a good time. Bandersnatch was the fat one? Yeah, it was a big group of us for the Day 26 one. Bandersnatch, were you there for the Scream tour with us? Because remember, I had to, they parked in, they parked over there on Manchester. And I drove. And it was all of us in the car. Okay. And that's when that one girl, and then the next day, they came here to watch BT's. Um, he wrote Soul for the Soul Awards. Awards. Yeah, but Banner Session didn't come to that. She didn't come to that. Okay. All right, we've had you on the screen a long time, Cobra Tay. Anything else? Nah, that was it. I just really wanted to know that, man. I just uh, it's gonna be exciting to see y'all again in May. I love y'all. Y'all appreciate y'all. Like always make me smile. Y'all always make me laugh for real. So. Yay! We My love God. you. Cobra see you. Day. Bye. Peace. Cobra Tay. We are, oh, Banner Set says, I was there for the Day 26 concert, yes. But it wasn't a Day 26 concert. It was a screen tour. <laughs> it was, it was they Bow -Wow opened, Bow -Wow. and Bow Wow was the end, and he killed it. Yeah, yeah um, he had a lot of songs. Banner Set, are you coming up? I know you're only a two-hour drive from us, but are you coming up for the team takeover in May? You better be here. All right, let's go to our last person. If she said no, the hospital got to be notified. The hospital got to be notified. Here we go. This person has been waiting. Look at her. We've been working on her being a young I lady, lies. an angel. Uh -huh. So she's just shaking her hands. She's oh, not nice. shaking her boobs. Okay. She's not twerking. All right. She's being a sweetheart. All right. And she's going to attract men who respect her for her intelligence, her beauty, <laughs> and her her sports knowledge, her business uh, sense, and all those good things. Her Isn't business that acumen. Yeah. Her business great. acumen. And her shirt says rise. Welcome rise. to the show, gorgeous. Look at the naturally beautiful face on this young lady. Look at this. Pretty girl. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Ashley, tell us where you're located and what you would like to talk about for relationships. Man. Hey, y'all. Hey, I'm Ashley White from North Kakaleka. Ah, so, but yeah, they naturally, naturally rise sitting up. But um, you had to talk about your booze while I just gave you this angelic introduction. Sit, sit. Naturally rise. Sit, sit. No. <laughs> I'm just Lord kidding. have mercy. I thought you was talking about Jesus. <laughs> I thought Jesus rose. Naturally rise, you know. <laughs> Respect. Oh, we love you. Thank you, real king. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. We're listening to this. So, um, I just want to say that girl that had the nerve to emasculate, I'm going to say emasculate that man, because first of all, if a dude actually does something like that for me, first of all, they better know I'm a sports person. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I do have, I've been on the nosebleeds once, but it, they got somebody messed up the tickets wrong because I I had folks in college. I knew college folks that played, and I had some great seats. Like I had like like say close to the court side seats. Mm. I always, and my mom always said, "You better not say you are not spoiled because you had all these connections that got you some good seats. So you better not complain about not getting any good seats." But nice. you know, but. But you know, when you make some good connections, you go, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. What was that that you just did right there? What was that? That what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. What am I going to do with you? <sighs> so, um, so my question is, um, do y'all, um, I don't know if any of y'all see the three month uh, rule video. Do y'all actually agree with that? Like, do y'all, is there, do y'all have, like, say, um, drop, like, a, not standard, but, like, drop a specific percentage of how interested you are in the girl within those three months? So, just to catch you up, Ashley posted this video in the Discord. 
it was this guy named D the Don, and he was giving the the game on the three month rule. He says that men do this, and he can talk about it because he no longer does it. But basically, within the first three months of meeting a young lady, they're giving her 100% of their attention. They're super sweet. I was going to actually make this uh, its own topic on the show, but they, um, they're super sweet and they're calling you every day. They're FaceTiming you. They're checking in on you. They may be taking you on dates. But as time goes on, they start to give you 90% of the attention. And then you notice, but you don't say nothing. Then 80%, you notice you don't say nothing. 75%, you're like, okay, I'm going to say something. Then he says, oh, my bad. He slips up, gives you another five back on that. 75. So he goes, Mike goes down to 60. You say something, he say, goes back to 65. But he just keeps falling off as much as you let him because he was only doing all those things to smash. And so she wants to know your, I think your question is, is it true or do we agree with it? Yeah. And do y'all feel like it's true or real? Like, it is very, I'm sure it's very real to a lot of little boys. I have never played those kind of games with a with the person's time and beyond that i'll tell you the type of person that i am and was you get a hundred percent of how you make me feel right so if you are making me feel like you are as invested in me as i am you oh i got nothing but time to text i got nothing but time to talk nothing but opportunities to link up and hang out and all of that the moment i feel like I'm not worth your time or, oh, and I'm busy and oh, things are so crazy. I'm out. I'm, it's not going to be no, let me drop back to 80. I'm out. That's when you start to realize, oh, I've been the person texting this person more. or I've been the person to reach out to this person more. That's when you fall back. I am zero or 100. So the fact that a guy would do all of that to smash, that's childish. Uh, now, on the other hand, the to smash part, I have met women that, where I thought you meant a, a different 90 day thing where women were like, yeah, it's going to take this much time. And every girl who presented that to me, I was out compared to Tangerine, but we were already enthralled beforehand. But uh, a guy beforehand. doing that to waste somebody's time, that's childish and immature. So, yeah, I thought the 90 day rule was about women making you wait 90 days, but it was him saying that men fall off after that 90 days. And they start to say when they when they get down to 60 and 50 percent, they start to say, oh, you know, things have just been so crazy. I'm so busy at work or, oh, you know, I'm going through something right now or, oh, I'm focused on this right now. Everybody focused on and this I've right now. And I've heard that from Everybody guys going before. Right now. And, and then next thing you know, they got somebody pregnant. So I was like, oh, that's what you were focused on. That's what you was going through. That was the work you were putting in. Them drugs. Hey, so Bandersnatch says... Someone can only keep up a representation for 90 days. That's why there's a 90, pe 90 day period at jobs where you can be let go. That makes perfect sense. If I'm not a priority, then neither is she, is what Isaac said. Uh, Green Ranger says, if you making them wait three months, you don't like them. So you feel like women who are interested in the guy should let them smash in the first couple months? That's a whole nother topic right I there. I feel like, why are, you putting, why are you putting a time limit on anything when things should develop organically? But I've always been like a big proponent on don't punish the new person for what the old person did to you. So if you smash the dude before me day one and that didn't work out. You're don't, not getting smashed day one because that one didn't work out. Right. Like don't punish me because that didn't work out. We might end up getting married. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I've never been a fan of those things, but everybody is only what they've been through. Guys always want you to smash. And Ashley, I'm talking to you and all the ladies out there. Guys always want you to smash as soon as they're aroused and in the moment. They don't want to wait. They don't want, they don't want you to think about it. They don't want you. It's like, what's the big deal? That, you know, like he just said, do it right away. Reginald just posted smashing should happen as soon as possibly. <laughs> the problem with that is you don't know the person and you don't know their red flags. You don't know their bad habits. And next thing you know, you are soul connected to somebody that you can't stop thinking about. And they are terrible spirited. They are disrespectful to you. You might reproduce with them and have a child with this stuck with you for the next 21 years. You guys are hanging out together, but this person that you smashed too quick, it's too late. Now you realize, oh my God, he's a criminal. Oh my God, he stole from me. Oh my God, he's trying to tell the cops on me so he can stay in my apartment, whatever. <laughs> Great call back. You have to get to know somebody, which is why I knew this man for two years and four months. We were only friends before we did anything because you have to know the real person but at the same time i'm not saying smash immediately like oh what's your name oh let's do it i'm talking about like 
Okay, cool. If y'all got to know each other, if y'all met each other on a Monday and y'all spent each day with each other and you feeling the vibe and y'all feel connected, anywhere around in is cool. But to say you're waiting an amount of time is crazy because to say that you don't know somebody and you feel like you're going to know them more after 90 days is also crazy. And I agree with that. There shouldn't be a, a specific time because like the show Love is Blind, I think this point, this right here, Callie Grown said, I feel like some of y'all ain't watching Love is Blind or Married at First Sight. We do watch Love is Blind and you can fall for somebody in a short amount of time because you literally spent every single day connected with them for hours. So that 90 days could be smushed down to 10 days. But the point is, you got to know somebody before you give them your body because that's why everybody says my baby mama's crazy. My baby mama's this. Well, do you know that before you smashed her raw? Right. This is the same person. You just, you saw her butt and didn't think about anything else. So just be careful before you Ooh, give your body to somebody You see else. that butt. We got to get out of here, baby. It's 125 uh, into the show. Yeah, we out. I don't believe we should smash early, but just a little touchy-feely flirty every now and then, Slick Tafari says with his old ladies. I'm just playing. They only in their 40s. Let me stop. Older women are quick to smash, too. Yeah, they only don't have a lot of BS. Autumn Reed says, I always believe that you'll know within 10 to 30 minutes if you're going to smash, but you may not know if you want to date them for up to a year later. Interesting. Because I, I do. don't know either with CT. Choose wisely, Monty says. All right, anything else we got to get out of here? He's doing the thing where he stands up early. Sorry. I was going to say, I have a question, but since it's too late, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait probably after the thing to ask. Okay, her. you have a really good question in the uh, Discord about arguments that I want to talk about next week. Um, anything else you have, put in, the, put in the Discord, and we'll put it in the next show. Okay. Okay, we love you, and we love Refined Ashley. She's gorgeous <laughs> and sweet. Bye. It's so funny that she had to bring up her boobs right away. And they said, and they, sitting up. <laughs> they, they rise. And then one of the comments said, yeah, uh, it's going to take some time for the refinement for, for Ashley. <laughs> uh, I like refined Ashley. Yay. She had such a good start before she started talking about them yiddies. All right. We love you guys. No shows coming up this weekend. We're going to support some friends. We're going to some game nights. We're doing some fun things. We're going to brunches for birthdays and stuff like that. Come out here in May and watch me on Tubi. Type my first name in on Tubi. I believe the movie that is called The Get Back is now on Tubi, as well as Gimme Five, where I'm the moderator, BT's the producer and the host. Type my first name in Tubi and see all the projects I have. Type my first name in on Amazon Prime. See all the projects I have on Amazon Prime and just get a whole, get all up in the team tangerine. I'll see you guys in the Discord. Have a great day. Anything? Nope. No arguments. Did we have a show with no arguments? Vandersnatch, can we get our props, please? We didn't do it last week either. But we didn't have know, no arguments? I thought she told us we had one last week. She tried to make one. We didn't have no arguments? No. I'm so proud of us. Never trust a big button and smile. Good night, everyone. Love you. Peace. Bye. No arguments, baby. Yeah. What was all that?